gravitas it's it's a word that literally means a kind of weightiness or um or heaviness right um and that could sound like a negative thing but actually i think it's it, in in connotations it has connotations when it's referring to humans uh as being like full of substance right being the kind of of person who can withstand difficult things right who can uh who can have uh strength in difficult situations right who has uh what you might call strength of character and strength of intellect uh, they they tend to have a kind of well deserved presence whenever they enter a room they have confidence in who they are and what they believe uh and and it's so that there's a lot of about gravitas that has to do with who you are and what kind of substance you have right a kind of weightiness uh and then i saw another one that i think jeremy said something like uh kind of like gravity right like having some kind of influence or pull right um and i think that's also part of the term uh, gravitas right it's it's kind of like the sun right so the sun is at the center of our um of our galaxy of our solar system here right we got um the planets that go around the sun, right? And then each of the planets have satellites to go around them as well. Um, and so people that have gravitas, they, they tend to have influence as well, but not influence in the sense of like a social media influencer might have where maybe they're really good at getting people to buy products, right? Or to, um, to kind of follow them for frivolous reasons, right? It's the right kind of influence, the kind of influence that like the sun has, right? The sun has the ability not only to draw things into its orbit and make it go round and round, but it also um, provides light and provides uh, flourishing life to those who receive its rays, right? Um, so it, it's, I think it's not just who you are, but what kind of impact and influence that you have in the world if you have the quality of gravitas. So the question is, how do we, how do we get gravitas? And, and what are some of the other related virtues that give someone that kind of quality, right? I, I think gravitas really is kind of a cluster of virtues, right? It involves uh, having wisdom so that people look to you for guidance, right? It involves having uh, fortitude, like courage and, and perseverance uh, to be able to withstand difficult things. Uh, it has a kind of temperance where you're not just um, following the, the, the kind of urges that your body might uh, send to you, but but being really to be in control, right? In a good, in the right kind of way. Um, to have a kind of uh, sense of justice where you're standing up for the right things in the right way, in ways that are effective, right? So um, gravitas, I think, has both this kind of substance or weightiness thing that's about who you are. And then it also is about what kind of impact you have, right? Uh, and so that's what we want to see happen in your life as a result of being a Gravitas student. We want you to be able to grow into a person of substance, of depth, of wisdom, of character, so that you can then go and serve the world and leverage the influence that you have as a result of that substance, as a result of that well-deserved respect that you receive and use it to bless other people, right? Not just to keep it for yourself and use it as a thing that May, builds yourself up or increases your fame or your power or your wealth, but rather is the kind of thing that you can then use to to serve the world and serve those uh, who are most in need. So I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of talk about how to grow in gravitas this year in in two related ways. Um, the the first thing I'm gonna say is a uh, piece of advice if you want to grow in gravitas is don't be a ghost. Don't be a ghost. And then my second piece of advice is going to be don't ghost. <laughs> okay, so it should be pretty easy to remember, right? Don't be a ghost and don't ghost. Okay, so how do we not be a ghost? Okay, a, a ghost, right? It, uh, whether you believe in ghosts or not, right? Like the way they're at least depicted in a lot of popular media is that they're very thin and wispy and don't have a lot of substance to them, right? I don't even know metaphysically how they're supposed to pick physical objects up or rattle door handles or do all the kinds of things that are scary in scary movies, right? Because they don't have any hands or, you know, like real hands that are substantial that have any kind of reality to them. How can they interact with the physical world, right? Um, and a lot of times as human beings, we can be kind of ghost-like. We, we just kind of do the things that don't matter that much, that don't have a lot of meaning, 
Uh, we can waste a lot of time on things that don't have any lasting impact, right? We can become like a ghost of ourself or a shell of ourself, right? Maybe we, we don't have enough confidence to, uh, in, in who we are to be able to, to move about in the world in a confident way, right? Uh, and so, so instead, we're just kind of like spookily haunting the world, right? We're like, oh, he or she's over there, but uh, we, they're not really making an impact, right? So um, how can you therefore uh, become non-ghost-like? How can you have gravitas where you have that substance, that richness of life? Well, a couple of things that I would say. One is to become fully human. And the second is to become fully the specific irreplaceable human that God made you to be. Right, so let's talk generally about what it means to be human, right? Um, you as a human have an incredible mind. It's absolutely amazing what it can do. Your mind is capable of amazing things. So for example, and just think about it this way, like um, let's imagine we have, we have our house um, mascots up right next to you, right? Um, these are fairly, you know, overall intelligent animals, but imagine that you were just an ant, right? An ant lives in a world that is governed by uh, natural laws, right? That has uh, all kinds of uh, truths about it that the ant cannot grasp. It has no idea about them, right? It, it can't think about the truth of the world in which it lives, right? It can't develop theories. It can't test those theories right? Um, you could have been made an ant, but you're not. God, for whatever reason, gifted you with humanness, with the ability to have uh, understanding of the experiences that you're going to have in the world. God's giving you the ability to ask big questions, right? Big philosophical questions about the meaning of life and, you know, the existence of God and what's, what's the good life? How should I live? Um, those are questions that you can ask and, and can search for answers to that are really quite human and you have to invest in those questions. So I wanna encourage you this year to wonder, to ask big questions, to start trying to make connections between different ideas and experiences that you have, to draw them together into a meaningful whole, right? I wanna encourage you also to fill your mind with good stuff, the kind of stuff that is true and good and beautiful and is lasting and is worthwhile, right? Don't fill your mind with junk, right? It's just like with your physical body. If you put a bunch of junk in, you're going to end up feeling unhealthy and sick and you're going to you know, say garbage in, garbage out, right? It's the same thing with your mind. Fill your mind with good things and good things will come out of it. Learn how to reason well, right? So uh, education is not just about accumulating a bunch of facts, right? It's good to fill your mind with good facts and to know them and not have to consult the internet or, or uh, a large language uh, uh, model, right? To be like ChatGPT to get the answers, right? It's good to have your, your head full of these things so they're at the ready, right? Um, but what matters more is that you progress beyond simple knowledge. Right, you need to get to a place of deep understanding that, that allows you to apply that knowledge to new situations, apply that knowledge in, in uh, significant ways so that you can make good decisions in the world. And you need to be able to organize your thoughts rationally, logically, learn how to reason well. We have some incredible faculty uh, on, that you will have access to who are really good at thinking well, and they will be able to teach you how to think well, and they're gonna challenge you when you make arguments and you're, you're gonna be free to make arguments and we're also going to be free to critique those arguments and, and raise questions and get you to refine them and strengthen them and make them better, right? Um, that's a huge part of what will make you more fully human, right? It's not only like being able to create arguments like ChatGPT can, right? But to actually be able to understand the inferential steps that you make from, from uh, from reasons to conclusions. Um, learn from others, right? There's a lot of diversity in this uh, community. People have unique experiences, unique things that they're interested in, that they've learned about. 
and you can draw from their experience and learn from them if you take it seriously and reach out and be proactive. So take the time to develop your mind by learning from others. And then the biggest kind of thing where I think we're trying to do is to integrate all of the knowledge and the understanding that we have to use our reason well to form a coherent worldview. A, a, a worldview is the ability to see the interconnections between all of the big questions and all of the proposed answers that are out there for those big questions. Um, you're going to see that there are disagreements about even the biggest, most fundamental questions in the world. Uh, and sometimes one particular question may seem to have uh, a strong argument on its side, but the answers to that question don't really do much to help us answer to answer other questions that are really important to us. And so we've got to see how to kind of create a coherent worldview through our reasoning uh, and through our, our, our wondering about these big questions. So to become fully human, this applies to everybody equally, develop your mind, right? The second thing that applies equally to everyone as humans, as the amazing, incredible human beings that you are, is to develop your heart, right? You're not just brains on a stick, right? You have hearts, you have bodies. So what I want to encourage you to do in order to grow in gravitas is to learn to love the right things the right way. Learn to love the right things the right way. So we're going to challenge you uh, to consider loving God, right? And, and the right way to love God is to worship God and to enter into a friendship with God. We're going to encourage you to care for others and to care for yourself, right? To, to look out for other people's needs. You may be limited in how you can care for each other uh, over, uh, you know, in a virtual format, but there's a lot that you can do, right? right. You, can, you. you can reach out, you can care for, you can pray for, you can give advice, you can receive advice, you can share ideas, you can collaborate, you can help, right? These are all possible even in an online context. And then thirdly, there's a lot of stuff in the world, right? Lots of physical objects. And a lot of them are, are good. And it's important to learn how to enjoy and to use stuff appropriately. So where we get into trouble is when we start worshiping other people or worshiping ourselves or worshiping stuff, right? Or when we start caring for our stuff as if it were more important than humans right? More important than relationships. We always say in my household, people are more important than things. And that's something you, you got to get the order of loves, right? You got to put God first, then others, then stuff, right? And so sometimes it's going to require, in order to care for people, it means sometimes you have to sacrifice your stuff, right? And so getting the right orientation towards our things is a huge part of how we can develop our heart, develop the kind of gravitas that is going to be really effective in the world. I would say also prioritize what lasts over what is fleeting, right? Think about the things that you give your time and your energy and your, your love to. Are all of those things things that are really lasting and really meaningful, or are they things that are less important and really should just be kind of kept at a distance in terms of what's at the center of your heart? And also, Practice restraint in the things that can become idols for you and take the right kinds of risks on the things that are really important and worth pursuing. Where, when the kinds of things like fear or worry might get in the way of you taking action when it comes towards caring for other people or learning something that's true or creating something that's beautiful or exploring a relationship with God, I would encourage you to put fear and worry to the side when it comes to the stuff that is good and practice restraint <laughs> with respect to the things that are not as important, right? So don't allow yourself to get overcome by uh, your bodily desires for uh, things that are not ultimately going to, to, to matter. All right, so that, those are kind of things that apply to everybody as human beings. You're amazing. You're capable of all kinds of uh, really cool uh, stuff as you pursue the um, the questions that come to your mind and as you pursue the the possible loves that come before your heart. And then I want to talk about now 
what makes you specifically valuable, right? Not just as a member of the species of human beings, right? But what makes you as an individual specifically valuable and the kinds of things you need to cultivate in order to develop your specific brand of gravitas, right? So here's the thing. God only made one you, right? There's, there's not another person like you. We even have twins in here and you're unique from each other. I know it, right? You have a unique contribution to make to this world. You are irreplaceable. We can't go to the store and get another one if we lose you, right? Or if we only get a shell or a ghosty version of you, right? There's only one of you and you want to cultivate the things that make you special and specifically um, interesting and specifically you. So I want you to this year pay attention to your internal subjective experience, how you perceive the world, how you think about things, and be willing to embrace those specific differences, to thank God for the unique ways in which He made you, as opposed to envying the ways that God made other people who are not you, right? These are the kinds of things that will kill. Your joy is by constantly comparing yourself to other people. Share your perspective. We need to hear from you. We want to learn from you. Turn, um, you know, try on uh, passions, explore the passions you've already got. Find the things that are deeply meaningful to you, especially the things that maybe are kind of weird and don't, don't uh, also apply to other people and go all in on them, right? Develop them, try new things to discover new passions and work on those things until you get good at them. Don't give up just because something's hard at first, right? I wanna also encourage you to explore your strengths and your weaknesses. Explore your specific personality. Explore the ways in which uh, God has situated you in a particular place, in a particular family, in a particular community, and the opportunities that come from being specifically situated there. There are things that you can do in the world that none of the rest of us can do because of where you are, right? And then train your body, right? You have your body. No one else can share it with you. Find out what it can do by training it, by pushing it to its limits, by developing new skills, by discovering new forms of artistic expression. Push yourself to become the best body that you, that you can be as well. Um, and then lastly, I would encourage everyone uh, to turn that inner dialogue that you possess and that uh, AI machines don't, right? This is important, right? How can you make sure that the irreplaceable you is irreplaceable, is deeply invest in the things that make you irreplaceable? You have an internal dialogue that goes on, right? You, you, you have a particular point of view on the world, right? You have particular ways in which you experience the world that are specific to you. I would encourage you to turn that inner dialogue that you have with yourself all the time, some of which is fill, filled with things that are true. And sometimes, if we're honest, it's filled with things that are false, right? Sometimes we get our inner dialogue going in ways that are not productive, that are not healthy, right? Where we're thinking negative thoughts about ourselves, right? And I would encourage you to turn your inner dialogue into prayer. Turn your inner dialogue into prayer. I think this is what part of what is meant when the Bible says that we should pray without ceasing, right? Is turn over your subjective consciousness that you think is completely private <laughs> and just your own. Turn that into prayer. Welcome God into your inner life. It's a place where really no one else can go. We can try to empathize. We can become friends. We can try to understand each other. But there is a barrier there, right? Ultimately, like, I don't know what it's like to be inside you, right? Inside your subjective experience. Um, but God can go there if you welcome him in. So I want to encourage you in that regard as well. All right. So those are some encouragements or some uh, uh, admonishments. Uh, to take seriously, I, I would like you to, to really focus this year on developing your specifically human characteristics and your specific, specifically you <laughs> characteristics. Um, and recognize that this is not an easy thing to do. You might think it's like, oh, it's easy to be human. I'm already a human. I just get that by default, right? It's easy to be a ghost-like human. It's not easy to become a substantial, full, 
flourishing human, right? Uh, it takes a lot of work. It takes prioritizing the right things, pursuing what's true, not settling for beliefs that are easy to understand or already fit with what you want to believe, right? It's easy to fall for propaganda. It's easy to take shortcuts, especially when you have so much knowledge at your fingertips because of the internet and AI. It's hard. It's hard to pursue truth all the way to the end, right? It's, it's hard to try to take in beliefs that are foreign to you and see if you can make sense of them. It's hard to not take a shortcut and struggle through a math problem, struggle through an essay, right? Struggle through the creation of a beautiful piece of art. Struggle is worth it. <laughs> Don't take the shortcuts. The only person who's ultimately going to be hurt by shortcuts is you. That's how you become a ghost, right? Prioritize beauty. Be creative. Expose yourself to truly beautiful art and architecture and music and dance. Don't just settle for images and videos that are stimulating, right? Don't get sucked into the, uh, the algorithms that are going to turn your brain into a slot machine that just keeps wanting to spin to the next one, right? That's how you become a ghost, right? Use technology to make beautiful things not to be a consumer <laughs> and pursue goodness, right? Take the character formation program seriously. It is a core part of what we offer to you at Gravitas. It is incredibly thoughtfully designed to help you grow on a daily basis. You'll come to find when you get into serious relationships that it's not a matter of the big showy sort of expressions of love. It's the everyday little things that you do that express love to another person that build a strong, solid, lasting relationship. It's the same thing with your character. It's the daily little habits that you develop over time that are going to ultimately grow your gravitas. It's not like one day you're going to wake up and suddenly you're going to have that quality, right? Or you're going to be able to just like write the perfect speech and win over a whole room. You may be able to deceive people for a little while, but substance is something that's earned and it takes time. Recognize that the pursuit of virtue, the pursuit of character is a lifelong process. You're gonna mess up. You're gonna learn a lot about yourself in the process. You're gonna learn how much you need God's grace to, to grow, but step into it, take the risks, take it seriously. Don't just settle for like being a nice person, right? You can be nice on the surface, get deep into your heart and work on it. So we're gonna support you in all of these pursuits this year. Our whole program is designed to do the kinds of things we're talking about here, right? We want you to grow in your mind through our classes. We want you to discover your passions through our Passion Academies program. We want you to develop your heart and your soul through our chapel and character formation program. These are here and available to you, but ultimately it's up to you what you make of them, right? You have to take ownership of this educational process. We're here to support you uh, and we will give you the resources you need, uh, but you've got to take the step. Okay, so that was don't be a ghost. <laughs> Hopefully that was, was clear enough and maybe that, that analogy will stick. Um, the second thing I want to share with you is don't ghost. <laughs> we live in a world of ghosting people where people just don't respond to each other. Something gets difficult or uncomfortable or uh, you don't want to uh, say what's true. So you just don't say anything at all, right? Don't return emails, don't return calls. That's ghosting, right? Uh, there are other ways that we ghost each other though that I think are even more significant. Whenever we're in a room together or in a classroom together and we're distracted by something else, right? Where we're really focused on uh, what's going on in our social media feeds or we're playing a game on our phone, right? That's a kind of ghosting, right? Like you're not really fully present. And so I wanna encourage you, 
like to become fully human and to become a person of influence, a person of gravitas, you really need to invest in relationships. We're made for relationship. We are made for it. You will not thrive if you just hoard in yourself off as a private individual. You have to open yourself up. You have to make yourself vulnerable. You have to take risks in order to thrive. And yes, you might be hurt in the process, but being hurt and reconciling is part of the process of growing, right? There's going to be some damage done in the process of growing. Same thing when you're you know, training your muscles, right? You're actually ripping up your muscle fibers in order for it to grow back stronger the next, you know, in, in the future. You have to experience some pain and some hurt in order to become a person of substance, okay? So invest in your relationships with your family. Invest in your relationships with your peers. I loved what Talia said uh, yesterday in encouraging everyone to reach out, to be proactive, right? To be responsive and to go out of your way to make friends. It takes a little extra work in this virtual environment, right? But if you do it, you have access to peers that you would never in your normal course of life have access to. You have the potential to have friends from around the country, around the world, right? That's amazing. When I was growing up, I had no access to very, like very few people that I had access to were, were so different from me. I didn't get the opportunity to learn from them, learn from their experiences and to make friendships across uh, such wide borders, right? So take advantage of that. It's amazing. Like, yeah, you might not always be able to be physically present with each other, but the trade-off is that you get to be present with people who you otherwise would never get to be physically present with. This technology is amazing and it can be used for good. So let's do it. I want to also encourage you though, to engage in relationships with your neighbors, especially those that are hard to love or different from you or in need of a lot of help, get out into your community, right? Don't just stay on your computer all day. We're gonna have you on your computer enough, right? Don't waste the rest of your day wasting time on your computer. Get out into the world, join local groups, clubs, youth groups, uh, go to uh, your places of worship, uh, sign up for community service, join a local choir, do a, do a club sport, get out there. And, and get into relationship with your neighbors. Develop relationships with your teachers. I know for a, a, some of you, you might be coming from schools where, or in, in some cases from cultures where uh, teachers are kind of like separate, right? They're, they're in, inaccessible. Maybe they're teaching a class of 30 or 40 kids. And so just to get them to answer one of your questions is really hard, right? Or where maybe they're put up on a pedestal because of the culture that you come from, where they're, they're like inaccessible and it feels like it might be disrespectful to engage in, in a communication with them. That's not how we think about education here. Uh, your teachers are available. They are all in. They really want to get to know and love you. They're committed to it. It's a requirement of the job <laughs> to, to take relationship with you very, very seriously. And so, uh, they're waiting for those opportunities. They will extend themselves, but you can extend yourself as well. Reach out, develop relationship with them. Um, there's some pretty cool people on this faculty and staff, right? Get to know them. You'll benefit. <laughs> and then as well, don't ghost God. <laughs> if you hear the promptings of the Holy Spirit or what just sounds like a voice in your head, pay attention. Don't ignore, listen, be present. Uh, God, according to, to Christians and Jews and Muslims, we believe God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. He's always available. He doesn't go on vacation. He doesn't take time off. He's not sleeping. Anytime you need God, he's there. You can meet him there, invite him into your inner self. The rest of us, we sleep sometimes. <laughs> so, you know, don't WebEx this at 2 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. Uh, you probably won't get a response. But if at 2 a.m. you're struggling with something, God's there. He can handle it. So don't ghost God either. All right. 
we've we've prioritized live instruction here at Gravitas. I will tell you, it is hard. It's really hard to schedule all of you from all over the world. It's really hard uh, to to be uh, fully uh, present and committed to showing up for class all the time for you and for us, right? But we prioritize live instruction because we believe relationships are absolutely essential for you to grow in your intellect, in your heart, in your character, in your faith. Absolutely essential. We want to be in relationship with you. So that's why we do live instruction. Um, and so and it's also why we provide programs way beyond just checking boxes of, you know, taking the classes you need to, to get your high school diploma. Right. This is about so much more than that. It's about you growing into the fullest version of yourself that you could possibly be. I believe this year is going to be a great year of growth for you as an individual. It's going to be a great year of growth for us as a community. And I'm excited to see you grow in substance, right? Grow in the kind of depth and richness of and strength of character that will allow you to be a confident influencer for what is good and true and beautiful in this world. And so uh, with, with that, I want to kick off the 2023-2024 school year and welcome you into the process of growing in Gravitas.